evening and welcome back to Inside Asia. This evening, we will continue our conversation with Dr. Pond, who is the professional architect, about the 20 commandments on how to prepare and to restore your house before and after the flood. So please stay tuned. Can you give me the, yeah, the yeah, yeah. example as to how uh, our uh, ancestors you know, built their homes you know, to cope with the natural disasters? Well, first of all, very clearly is that they will raise their floor really, really high, sometimes two or three meters, as much as the timber structure can, um, can pick it up. And also, when the flood comes, it's no problem because they will have boat. And you will see sometimes that, hey, everything is dry and then you have a boat for what? Well, then the flood comes, it's no problem. Mm. That's one thing. Mm. And that's in architectural scale. Mm. If you're talking about... They can also raise the livestock, you know, under the... Yes, many, many things. Okay? Thanks too, yeah. Uh -huh. And, you know, livestock is plenty. Yeah. If, you, if, the, if the flood goes and everything, it can, it can uh, bring it back again. It's not exactly a problem. When they understand that, then they, they can adjust their architecture and lifestyle where they don't see it as a problem. And you will see it in some village in Thailand that they're still maintaining that value and they will survive this flood, like, comfortably, I would say. And then, it, that's an architectural scale. If we're talking about urban scale, that would be another phenomenon because in the past, the reason why our ancestors, King Rama the first and King Taksin, picked this location is because of security mm. from Burma on the other side. And also, the location of like this, like Bangkok, mm. is great for agricultural land because it's a center of water. Water is plenty. Mm. And that's good for that time that we are really um, agricultural based. Our ancestors cannot, will not, never be able to imagine how far we have come. We have this 40, 60-story high-rise building. But, and one, one thing that changed a lot is that our surface, that used to be what they call pervious surface, mm. and the water can seep in easily, mm. is gone. We have what they call these days this impervious surface, which means that if the water is stop, stuck on it, they have to run somewhere, and we have to manage it. And when we, don't, we cannot manage it, we stop. And the ponding effect happens, and the water rises. And that's why we have a flood. If you look at the map right now, Bangkok is standing in front of the water direction. It's like they're standing against the water direction, but we need to live with it. We cannot move Bangkok. And besides, Bangkok is uh, located uh, below the sea level. Really? Okay, let's say if Bangkok is located below sea level, then it's probably so as Amsterdam. And right now, Amsterdam, they have, they have flood problem every year, and they seem to be okay with it. So this whole thing that we see right now, and anyone can blame anybody, it's going to be a lot of pointing finger after this. But for sure is that we need to do two things. We need to do something with the built environment, and we need to do something with the management. That will be a long story after this one. So when did the, the transition actually uh, get ahead, you know, from the old traditional architecture to right. the modern and urban architecture that mm -hmm. uh, ignores the uh, local wisdom? When? I would say... It's a world phenomenon, it's called globalization. You know, people to start to subscribe to the value that they think is cool, but they don't really understand the source of it. They don't understand the reason for it. So when they say, this is, looks great, let's do it right in Bangkok, people appreciate it, and they don't see the problem that they come after. For example, I just told you the same story that they're supposed to leave the first floor open, so then now let's enclose the first floor and have a room and put some air conditioning into it. Mm. So when the water comes, it's flat. Mm. Come on, mm. you know, this is a simple phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that we, we start to do this for hundreds and hundreds of years. And something is good, like technology and other education system, many software is good, but we need to understand the reason for it. Okay. You know, not everything is appropriate in this. How about architecture schools? Do they still teach the local wisdom to yes. how to build uh, not only houses, but also other uh, structures? Yes. Um, one thing that we need to uh, understand for sure is that in this climate, the climate never changed. The reason why we have certain types of architecture, what's called vernacular architecture, is because of this climate of the world. We understand this climate, and this climate will be the same thing even though you build the high-rise building, even though you build anything. You have to understand the climate and live within this climate, and that is one of the main values that we need to maintain. Our architectural school maintains that value. We still have the traditional Thai architecture department that maintain this value as well. But not many people you know, would like to build their house in the old Thai uh, style house anymore. That's a good argument because if you, you need to think about something that changed. One thing that changed for sure is the resource of the natural resource. Timber used to be plenty and free. Now it's not. It's so expensive. 
And also, we used to have a lot of space, more than 20 modern people. Now it's not. We have a very few space. So the, the way to live, like in economical level and very resource concern, might be changed. Who can afford Thai houses? They has to be like a very very rich man, you know. And if you if you want to live very resourceful and very very economical, you have to live in a condominium. So that's changed too. You are part of the doctor house. Oh, <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit. You know what what are you doing with this, and and what does this club, you know, trying to uh, do to help the people to protect the house? Right. We are the groups of architects that we call ourselves in Thai Mo Ban, which is mean doctor for the house. And sometimes people call us doctor house because it's related to the famous TV show in the United States. Basically, what we do is that we give a free consultancy for the people who need help in terms of information about uh, repairing their house, maintaining their house. Especially in this situation that we're facing right now in the country, we feel that we need to step up and give the public some appropriate information. And I have to give the credit to the uh, former chairman of Association of Siamese Architects, uh, Dr. Yot Yem Thep Taranon, who wrote the book uh, called The 20 Commandments to Manage Your Home uh, Before the Flood, which we talk in detail. Okay. Yes. So mm -hmm. can you, you tell me you know, how uh, we should go about to prepare uh, or to come up with measures to prevent our house you know, from the floods? In this manual, we will focus on the general conditions, which is the uh, detached home. And detached home that normally built by what they call the brick mortar or the Goyi Chapun in Thai. We will, we will go one by one. Is that first thing you need to concern is that the direction of flood. And if you view the flood like an, like an enemy that try to attack you, you need to understand where they come from because okay. The, sometimes flood is not so polite, let me say that. They don't just raise slowly to like, uh, give you some time. No, sometimes it's called a flash flood. They come right away with force. If it's just raised slowly, it's no problem. But it comes with the vector force into it, they will hit the wall, and it can destroy some uh, structures. So you need to see that, okay, you are in the, like, let's say in, like, in the risky zone that the flood might attack. Where does it come from? Is it come from the back of your house? Does it come from the front? Where is it going to come from? So you can manage to defend your okay. home properly. You have to understand. That's so if the floods one. come at the, back, at the back of the house, we can have time to set up the barricades to Yeah, and, and also you might need to support the structure, which uh, that's also important. First, you need to understand the direction of the flood. Okay. And then number two is that, let's say the situation of the flood that will um, completely um, cover your first floor, which is maybe two meters plus flood level. This water, the still water I'm talking, they have a lot of strength. They can push your wall. They can destroy your structure. That's, that's number two is that, what is the strength of your wall and structure? And you need to be careful because, let's say if you carry a cup of water, in that place there's a force that push your hand. If you go into the swimming pool, you will see the force of water can just push your wall and your, your house will be destroyed, your, this wall. So how can we fortify Either the house or the wall? Oh, we need to fortify the back of the wall. Like if you want to bring the sand back, you need to build the sand back behind the wall to make sure it push back the water enough. So that would be a good location to, to locate. You know, that's, that's one of the things. Number three that you should have uh, in your hand is the silicone gun. This is, um, might be a black stroke, but this is going to be a great time for you to see where your house is leaking, you know, because mm -hmm. you're going to see the water just seep in just like that. So you need to prepare that then you might need to start shooting some silicone by yourself just to buy time, you know, okay? And basically, if, if the water is deep in three meters, I would say we should evacuate, but, you know, if it's not, then you should prepare to kind of like maintain your house as much as possible. Number four, and this might be something surprise to many people, is the tree. Mm. Man, you love the tree, the like nice big tall tree that next to your home, and you would like to preserve it, but when the water comes, the water table underground and the water on ground, it will seep in and it will destroy their roots. Mm. And this tree will not be stable anymore. And it when it's not stable, the house. yes. So what you have to do is you have to try to support it with some sort of like stick or okay. appropriate timber to support it to make sure 
you don't want to support it totally. You just want to support enough for them. If they fall, they get away from your house. That's all you need. Number five. Um, so one thing you need to remember is that when you something that you not see sometimes is also important. You see your house. That's one thing. But something you not see like your mechanical, electrical system, and sanitary system is also major role. So you cannot live in your house if your flush doesn't work. Same thing here. Number five is a water tank underground. So sometimes the source of water that you have is located underground for your consumption water, and at this time of flood, it will be it will be contaminated because of the flood has some many dirty water. It's going to seep into those tanks. So be careful not to use it. You know, but I, I recommend you to stop using your seal water. it and then buy a new one. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah, that would be the other one. But in terms of water consumption, try to get it from the bottle that you buy from the store only. Because right now the the water from the main grid system doesn't work anymore. Okay. Number six is the um, your electrical system outside of your home. And you might think like, what is my electrical system outside of your home? That's a lot. One of the most important uh, item is your pump. Your pump that come yeah. to the second yeah. floor because the water pumps, yeah. if if the it's flood and it's still elect electrical system is still operating and you have a lot of chance to get electrocuted. First you thing you should turn shut it switch. down. Yeah. Normally in the modern home, they split the switch between exterior first floor and second floor. At least your home will have the exterior switch, so make sure you switch it off. If you can move your pump, move it. You know, if you can, then just leave it there. Number seven is the animal. I mean, you have your pets and you have your dog. That's one thing. That's the animal you love. But now it's flood. Your home becomes an island, and there will be the rescue zone for any kind of animal. Some of them you don't really like, you know, like snakes and all those like frogs and anything. Crocodile is some uninvited guest. Oh my god, yeah, hope not. But <laughs> what you have to do is, um, there's this, like, um, I think, Poon Khao, not so sure what in Thailand would it call in this case. You, you need to buy this Poon Khao. <laughs> yeah, it's like, is it a lime cement or something? Yeah. That you need to, like. White powder. Yeah. No, white powder might not be. Enough. <laughs> not the baby powder. It has to be a lime cement that you need to. If, if your house still have some land left, make sure you kind of like surround it with Boon Khao and it will block the snake. Oh. If it's not, then you might need to make room in your house and drop it around and you stay in the middle. It's almost like ceremony. Make sure you need to drop it, but, but it will protect you okay. and your children. Number eight is the toilet. The toilet, when, when we like do our business with the toilet, we, we want the water to carry our waste yeah. away. This one will not work anymore in this time. Okay? Because, so uh, should we need a temporary one? Um, if you have temporary one, that's good. One. Yes, that's good. Another one, if you want to make sure it's still usable, is you need to, the most important pipe of this toilet system is the vent pipe. The vent pipe needs to be connected. Because if the vent is closed, it's because of some like garbage or some leaf or anything blocking it, and the vent doesn't work, the toilet is going to explode, yep. and that's not what you want. Okay, to make sure that vent is still working, some people even seal the toilet completely and use the disposable one, the temporary one. That's good too. Number nine is the electrical system within your home. This is dangerous because, let's say, if the water flood the first floor, shut it down for the first floor. Or else people will get hurt, electrocute, same thing. That's pretty simple. But we still can use the second floor, right? If your uh, circuit is split. In some home, like in a rural area, they might mix the circuit together, okay. and that's not work anymore. Number 10, the strength of your door and window. It's almost like the wall stuff. Mm -hmm. Because this is different. I mean, the wall, you can just put the sandbag to support it. But window and door, you might need to use it. So you need to make some decision. Mm -hmm. if. If which door you're going to be closed, which door you want to leave it for emergency plan, or you can jump it out from the second floor. Mm. If you want to protect the whole third floor completely, then sandbag, put it everywhere. Mm. You know? Okay. Number 11 is the most important equipment that you might have right now is your cell phone. So wrap it completely and make sure it has enough battery. 
Also, another one is the radio. And sometimes they make announcement through the radio. Then you make sure you uh, be able to. This is two important thing. How you're gonna communicate to the world, okay. like direct, and how you're gonna absorb information from the world. Mm. Number twelve, same thing. You need to support the battery for number eleven. Mm. So battery for your cell phone, battery for your radio. Mm. That would be the last two thing you want to throw mm. away. Battery is for the flashlights. Yes. Also other equipment if you need. That's, that that I think that's good enough for you okay. to live on. And if you need, if you have time to move your stuff. Then you need to plan ahead. Something that you cannot move, then you probably need to throw it away. I mean, you, I mean, there's gonna be some damage, you know. You need to save your life. Number fourteen, plastic. Mm. If you can wrap with plastic on everything, like not everything. I mean, at least your cell phone and something that if the water seep in, it will broke or it will dam be damaged. So make sure you wrap everything up completely. This is also apply to the plastic bottle. If you just have two plastic empty plastic bottle with you, then it might save you because it will help you float. Oh, you know? So those, those plastic can have a lot of benefit right now. <laughs> Number 15, what do you want to have with you in the plastic bag is also food and medicine. Mm. And please, not like the food that you need to cook. Mm. You know, if the food that you need to cook before you eat, that doesn't mean anything. Mm. It has to be the food that you like, can eat right away. Mm. Okay, like crackers or some something that sandwich. you can eat. Sandwich, make sure it doesn't like not five day sandwich, you know, those kind of things. Number 16 is your roof. You might need to step on it mm. when it's completely flat. Is your roof strong enough? And you need to check right now. If it's not, then if it's three second floor, then leave. And number 17, the theft. You know, mm. we live in a society that people really don't really love each other that much. Then you need to also be careful because this is a time that they will make them move. They will come and steal things from you. Or sometimes they just move in front of your face. You cannot do anything. Mm. How are you going to protect your own property and your safety too? Mm. Number 18, this is management stuff now. Do you know your neighbors? Try to get to know your neighbor. This is a good time because you need to help each other now. And we live in a society we don't care about neighbors anymore. Number 19 is that comes to evacuation plan. Mm. How? Because it's, yeah, it's the opposite. You know, you try to secure your fortress of your home, everything. Okay, how can I get out? Mm -hmm. You need to ask that question too. You know, because security comes with limitation of evacuation. How are you going to evacuate? If you need to go, then you need to go. 20 is not much to do with architecture. It's like stay focused. If you survive, all the problem can be solved. Save your life first. You can always find your house later. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Your life is most mm -hmm. matters most. Wow, that's quite a very good summary. Uh, 20 commandments, you know, 20 from commandments. the... 20 commandments. Dr. Yod Yam Dr. Yod Yam, I see. Yeah. Well, but how about for the houses that have already been submerged? You know, what's your recommendation for them? As for those who live in Ayutthaya, Nakhon Sawant, or Putum Thani, many of those houses you know, have already been submerged underwater. So mm -hmm. how can they... I mean, in case that the water recedes, how can they go back and to try to recover, to repair, or to rehabilitate their houses to, so that they, I mean, the conditions you know, can uh, return to normal. One of the things that they have to uh, keep in mind is that no rush. You, know, you see your house and you might be, oh my god, my house is still so intact, I'm so happy. And then you walk in and then you turn on the switch and you get electrocuted mm -hmm. right away. Because just slowly investigate first. In this building, there's so many systems. You know, the more complicated your house is, the more system is embedded within there. Don't expect that after the house, uh, the water is subsided and you go in there and everything is going to be okay. No, it's not. First, you need to check the structure. Is everything is still intact? And if you don't know anything, ask your local like uh, uh, craftsman Chang, or if you can afford, bring some engineers to investigate the structure first. And okay, I think this house is okay. Then you go live in there. Number two is the um, electrical system. Is it still working? I don't think so. And mostly you need to overhaul your electrical system and reinstall it. You know, because, so the structure works, then you think about electrical system. If they're still working, then go looking at the mechanical system. Your air condition is gone. Mm -hmm. you know, but then the water pipe and everything, what do we need to fix? Is all leaking? It's going to be some leaking. When all this checklist is passed, and then you're thinking about how to fix your house, which is going to be some work. You know, start from like surface, ceiling, 
and we, we do many, many things, it's going to be some cost. Even though your house is still intact, structurally, it will be some cost for you to pay. Do you think that uh, this flood will serve as a wake-up call for the Thais or for the people, for the professionals you know, in the architecture feel like you, that, that they have to go back to seriously uh, examine uh, the way that, that, we, that you know, we build our homes or, or we build our structures, mm -hmm. the high rises, you know, whether yeah. we'll go back you know, to the old days, you know, to the local wisdom. Yeah. I think we have abandoned our great wisdom from our ancestors for so long. Yes, definitely it's time to uh, bring it back to reconsider which aspect we sh should uh, continue on, which aspect that we can use today. Not everything can be used today. Like I told you, Yuan Tai is not exactly the great model for lifestyle that we have right now. Also, we, we need to, this is not the end. This is the beginning. Let's in, imagine if you have like something like this every year. What's going to happen? You know, it's going to be a disaster for the economy and the whole country as a whole. So, yeah, we need to think in terms of both like architectural, urban planning, and also coordination between government authorities and professions. Need one, one thing that I really hope is that this disaster will bring back the Thai people together. I would like to think that way. You know, so eliminate all this hate, like political hate and political difference and. We still live in the same land, and we, we suffer the same water. How about the concept of greenhouse? Uh, does it help, you know, or how does it you know, help? Yes, because one of the most important uh, aspects of green home is to uh, bring the natural element back into the built environment, including the pervious surface. We try to have so many pervious surfaces. You don't need to invest in storm water system to manage the drain, and water collection Rainwater harvesting is a concept, but rainwater is free. If everyone, let's say in Bangkok, if each of us help holding the water within our property for one hour, for a certain amount, we probably can almost get away from flood completely. Flood from rain, I mean, not flood like this type of flood. Mm -hmm. So yes, green building will help. We need to investigate that. And then we uh, have also uh, destroyed the environment in the past. Uh, we have built new roads to cut across the waterway. We developed a lot of new home estates, and and this you may know, obstruct the uh, flow, you know, of the of the water. Yeah. But in the past, water when when we have the floods, the water just uh, swept down quickly mm -hmm. and then went out the river or into the sea. But now the water is getting stuck you know, somewhere. Right. And it's just, I mean, moves slowly downward. And mm. this has created lots of pressure and, right. and lots of damages. So what's your thinking on this? Someone said the great force of um, modern economy is laws and regulations. I would say the great force of economy is market. Uh, that will dictate everything. Because after this year, the consumer who is going to buy the detached home somewhere in the suburban area, this is going to be the factors of this decision. Okay, are you in the flood line? Is this area was flooded in like Hong Hai Hasi, like this year, 2011? Is it flooded on back then? Also, insurance company who will have to pay off a lot of money at this time. They might ask that if your property or factory was in the flood line mm. of this they require, year, they will require you to pay a higher raise, premium. Or maybe we're not going to cover you because we cannot find somewhere else to locate your factory. And that, that will solve everything. You know, we have this urban plan that locate the urban center in the flood line. Mm. In the water line, I mean, you can have this urban plan, but if they know better, they will not build any projects over there. And this will be the factor of land purchasing, the factor of property purchasing for many, many people from now on. They will think about yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes our program for this week. I hope that our program will be useful for you so that you can prepare yourself over the flood situation. So good night. สวัสดีครับ.